Our cover story tonight looks at Social Security. You've been paying into it all your working life, but how much do you know about this 75-year-old program? And will it be there when you need it? You'll meet Curtis Weathers, a former pro football player who found his real calling as an educator. And you'll learn ways to protect your hearing on this edition of The Best Times. I'm Chris Hardaway. Welcome to the April edition of The Best Times, a series that looks at life after 50. I just received my social security statement. The government mails them to you about three months before your birthday. When you get yours, take a look at it. It may be an eye opener. As part of our continuing It Matters series, we're taking a look at social security. It matters because it's the largest single program in the federal budget and one of the few that affects virtually every American. And it matters because the program is heading toward a crisis that could affect your retirement future. Let's take a look at these issues and more in A Boomer's Guide to Social Security. Take it now while it's there. <laughs> Is that your feeling? In January of last year, Frank and Sue Guarino made a decision. After Sue lost her job and Frank was downsized, their retirement plans changed. And at age 62, Frank filed for Social Security benefits. If I don't take it at 62, I you know wait until 66, which is my full payout. Uh, um, taking it at 62, I, I wait till 83 to break even. That doesn't make any sense. I'll take, I'll take the, you know, extra four years and be happy. There are many factors for boomers to consider when approaching retirement age. But before we examine the basic strategies, let's get a quick history lesson. Social Security was enacted in 1935, born out of the Great Depression. In signing the Social Security Act, President Franklin Roosevelt called it a law that will take care of human needs. In 1940, Ida Mae Fuller was the first American to collect Social Security. Her first check was for $22.54. Now that we've talked about history, it's time for a quiz. See how many of these questions you can answer correctly. At what age can you collect Social Security benefits? Is it A, 65, B, 67, C, 62, or D, it depends? The correct answer is D, it depends. Well, the earliest you can file is still age 62. Obviously, when you take a benefit prior to your full retirement age, it's a reduction. But the full retirement age varies depending on when your birth date is. Currently, the majority of the individuals that are filing are, um, were born between the years of 1943 and 54, so their full retirement age would be 66. And then from there, it gro grows gradually, two months every, for every year that you were born. If you wait to file after your full retirement age, you can get what we call delayed retirement credits, and you can earn those up to age 70. True or false, you can continue working and still collect Social Security. That's true. If you are your full retirement age and beyond, there is no limit. But if you're under your full retirement age, there is a limit. In 2010, the limit is $14,160. If you file for benefits and you're still working and you're earning over that limit, we hold a dollar for every two that you're over. So basically, we pay you based on your earnings estimate and we withhold any benefits that are necessary. Another true or false question. Social Security benefits are not subject to federal income tax. Unfortunately, that's false. It is considered income. If you're an individual and you earn um, more than $25,000 a year 
in income period, whether that be from Social Security or other income that you have coming in, then you will have to pay taxes. If you're married filing jointly, anything over 32000 you would have to pay federal taxes. One more question. How many times has the Social Security payroll tax been increased in the 75-year history of the program? Is it A, 12 times, B, 20 times, C, 32 times, or D, 56 times? The correct answer is B, 20 times. It is a pay-as-you-go program. Basically, it's an intergenerational program where the individuals who are working today are paying those that are receiving benefits now. And we do realize that there have been a lot of changes with the agency. If you look back throughout the years, you'll see that the changes would be, in 1935 it was signed into law, in 1939 they added survivor's benefits. And throughout the years they've added different things. In the 80s, Congress um, made a lot of changes as far as the real, full retirement age, which we're seeing now, gradual changes to keep the program going. In its 75 year history, Social Security has been impacted by demographic changes, our cyclical economy, and most recently, the longevity revolution. In 1935, life expectancy for men was 58, for women, 62. The ratio of workers to retirees was approximately 16 to 1. Today, the longevity revolution and the economic recession have changed those numbers dramatically. Men are living to 75 and women to 80, and the ratio of workers to retirees is 3.2 to 1. By 2040, when all the boomers have retired, the ratio is projected to be 2 to 1. It's a numbers game. When the baby boomers actually hit the system, uh, it's going to be... Uh, yeah, I tell people it's the freight train going down the tracks and there's no light on the front of the train. Everyone is living longer, uh, the health care situation is keeping people alive longer, so consequently um, the benefits keep dwindling as we keep increasing the number of retirees versus the number of people actually working. In February of this year, the Congressional Budget Office projected that Social Security would have a negative cash flow, that is, paying out more money than it was collecting, by 2016. Just one month later in March, new data revised that estimate. Social Security will be cash flow negative this year. Which gets us to our first big question. Is Social Security going broke? I think the term we hear more than not is social insecurity. Whether the system is still going to be around. That, that's a huge concern. So my, my comment to them is usually, uh, it will probably be there. I can't guarantee anything like that. But it will probably be there, but it'd be there in some other form. So at some point, it's going to have to be changed because it's basically, in the long run, uh, untenable. As our commissioner says, there is reason for concern, but there's no reason for panic. Social Security isn't broken, but it definitely needs a tune-up. As we learned in our quiz, the system has been tweaked many times in the last 75 years. So our second big question is, how do we fix Social Security? Do we A, raise the payroll tax? A 2% payroll tax increase would make the plan sovereign. Definitely an increase in the payroll tax. That's coming. B, raise the taxable earnings cap. The amount of money that is taxed for Social Security purposes has to go uh, higher. As you know right now, it's 106800 of your salary is taxed for Social Security, and then after that, uh, you're not taxed. Uh, put the payroll tax on everybody's income, take the cap off. I, I'm personally, as fiscally conservative as I am, I, I was in favor of that. It makes sense. One uh, quote I saw said, if you raise it about $200,000, then the Social Security system will be sovereign for 100 years. C, cut benefits by raising the retirement age. The full-time retirement age uh, will probably need to be pushed back for um, people in, in my generation, it's 66 to 67. Uh, for somebody in their 30s or 20s, that will probably end up being 68 or 69 when they can collect full benefits. Or D, do nothing. If nothing is done, as you stated, 
you know, uh, benefits would be paid at 70% for a period of time. And uh, so there's no need to panic right now, but here again, people on both sides of the aisle and, and the Congress and the Senate, they have to come and make a decision as to what we need to do. There are some other ideas being floated. Means testing, which is reducing or eliminating benefits for well-to-do retirees or revisiting the Bush administration's proposal of siphoning off part of an individual's benefits into personal retirement accounts. There are no clear answers to the question of how to fix Social Security, but there is agreement on the need. The sooner they do it, the more moderate the change will be. If they put it off, the more painful it's going to be for all. So many people are dependent on it. That, if that Social Security check didn't come for some people, they wouldn't have bread on the table. They wouldn't be able to pay for drugs. Forget the donut hole. I mean, it would be a big hole. But the point is something drastic has to be done because you've only got, I mean, the key thing is two people working, one person Social Security, which means that this one guy is going to get $30,000. Each of these two have to pay $15,000 just in Social Security. You probably don't recognize this woman, but she occupies a singular position in Social Security history. In January of 2008, at age 62, Kathleen Casey Kirschling became the first baby boomer to file for her retirement benefits. Millions more will be following her. Which brings us to our last question. When should you file for your benefits? Remember, for baby boomers, full retirement age is 66 to 67. Delaying until age 70 entitles you to higher benefits. Taking benefits at age 62 will reduce your check by about 25%. It's a complex decision, one that must be answered on an individual basis. But there are two major factors that can govern your decision, your money and your health. You do have to first look at what other assets do you have. I mean, what are your other forms of income outside of Social Security? Are they adequate enough to provide for you for 20 to 25 potential years. And if that is not the case, then you're better off taking the money early. You need to look at income. Are they retiring? Are they retiring early? Uh, how much uh, are they gonna lose by working and taking Social Security at the same time? You, you also have to look at your health s situation. And what's your health gonna be like and what's the cost? What's gonna cover? Medical, medical expense is gonna be huge in retirement. And, and could offset anything that you, that you might think you're going to be able to use for, for uh, you know, living the same life you did. And the break-even point is that age, when you compare if you took it at 62 versus at 66, how long would it take for the difference to catch up? Uh, meaning that if you're trading down to that 75% reduction on your full-time retirement income and you take it at 62, if you factor in that difference, at what age is it going to be beneficial for you? And in most cases, uh, somebody in the baby boomer generation, it, it's between 77 and 79. So if you anticipate that you'll live beyond that, then you're in a pretty good position to, to want to consider taking it early. Obviously, there can be many other considerations. That list is almost as huge as the 50 million Americans that will receive benefits this year and fully one-third of those citizens will rely on their checks as virtually their entire source of retirement income. Seventy-five years after its passage, the Social Security Act still fulfills Roosevelt's promise of taking care of human needs. It is the only retirement benefit that you can't outlive. You probably have more questions and the place to look for answers is the Social Security Administration's website. They have retirement calculators that can help you determine when to take your benefits and estimate your benefit amount. If you're not online, use the toll-free number or visit your local Social Security office.